Um, all right, we got one from IG. He says, this is from Hector. He said, um, how do we keep the peace with other department members who aren't as passionate about teaching PE? It's difficult to do my own thing when we rely on each other so much from day-to-day planning, equipment, space, and grading. Ooh, that's a good question. And then it, it's kind of referred back to what we were talking about earlier, um, you know, giving other people grace. Uh, you never know what somebody's going through. You never know what kind of situation that they're in. But if you don't see eye to eye with the person that you're working with, that's an opportunity for you to sit back and watch what they're doing and see why they do what they do and try to give them and try to try to see it from their perspective. Um, They may be taking a different kind of approach than what you're going at. Uh, And then, like we always say, communication is key and being able to communicate and have honest conversations with people that you're working with. That Hey, like we may not see eye to eye, but this is how I see to do it. And then when you get the opportunity to teach, then you can show them your passion for them, your, your, your expectations and all that kind of stuff as well. So uh, it's difficult because you know, there's, especially when you're sharing equipment, you're sharing space, you're sharing activities and stuff. It's difficult when you don't see eye to eye perspective wise, but uh, being able to communicate, have that open dialogue and, and seeing it from their perspective will allow you to relax and not be so overwhelmed when you're in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Communication is definitely important. I think, um, this made me just think of this quote I heard like a couple weeks ago yeah. and it was, uh, people don't quit jobs. They quit bosses. Yeah. But it's like, same thing. Like people don't quit jobs. They might quit a coworker. Correct. Cause like if it's this kind of situation where I'm going to have to work with somebody that I just clash with so badly every day. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably gonna look for another job. Yeah. Like uh, unless there's a way for us to, you know, teach outside inside like i know when marcus was student teaching with me we did like an outside inside thing where one of us would teach inside one would teach outside um when marcus and me were working together it was like the total opposite of that it was like total 100 percent synergy (laughs) oh man it was easy as as on the Uh, same page as you could be oh yeah we were on the same page i mean it's probably Um, why i've been doing the podcast 14 years later so yeah it is yeah it worked out um so it just makes such a big difference. Like if you can't find a way to get on the same page, like in my mind for me, I know it's worth it for me to go and find a situation where I am on the same page with somebody. Yeah. And that's one reason why I ended up going elementary because when I was at the high school, I saw a lot of, I, I, I don't, he didn't say if he was high school or elementary, but I assume it seems like maybe a high school situation, maybe a high school but situation. Yeah. If it's elementary, it's, if you're elementary team teaching, it's probably even a little bit harder because you have to be in, usually in the same gym, same yeah. together. But like even at the high school, it was tough because you have a lot of coaches that were really there just to coach and you had to share a gym with them. And I'm trying to do like a basketball unit on half the gym. And then the other coach it's is just literally like just like rolling the, throwing the out. ball out yeah. and like on his computer. Yeah. So it's like my kids are like, what are, why do we have to do this? Like, yeah. Look at them. They're just like shooting around. Everything. Shooting around playing. Yeah. So that made it almost impossible to teach, which is one reason why I decided I wanted to go elementary because I knew it would be easier to control the environment to build my own program Mm -hmm. to kind of have my own thing. And I kind of saw that and talking to my friends that were at other high schools, it seemed pretty common. Um, Does seem like more of a situation, more of a secondary, you know, problem than, than an elementary problem. But I mean, it's a problem everywhere. I mean, no matter where you work, no matter what situation you're in, you're not always going to agree with everybody. That's a good conversation to have with your students as well. It's like, we're doing these cooperative activities. Mm-hmm. Everybody on your team, you might not like everybody on your team. You might not like whoever is in your, you know, cohort, whatever like that. Yeah. But you still got to find ways to do it. And and um, it's just trying to put yourself in their perspective, where they're seeing it, where they're view, where they, how they view the situation going on, and then try to give them a little grace because you, know, you you never know what people got going on at home. You just you just never yeah, know. So. For sure. And I mean, you got to make the best of where you're at, make yeah. the best of what you have. Yeah. Um, but like long term thinking wise, if it seems like they're going to be in that it's, that environment's not going to change, I wouldn't in my brain be signing up for like another 15 years of that. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, like yeah. You want to be in a healthy situation, so you kind of have to decide if you think it's something that you could change and like the way to change it would be all the stuff Mark is talking about. Yeah. Having empathy, communicating with them, trying to find a way to inspire them. Um, but some people 
pretty hard to change. <laughs> so it might be easier to go and, find something and else. You can't control what other people do. Yeah. So you can only you control just, what you do. You can only control you. So yep. you can't control what other people do. 